Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Oh my god. <laughs> Will this be the last episode ever recorded? It might be. No, I'm kidding. Uh, episode three of whatever we're calling this. Joe is late today, and we have to talk about it. It's debatable. <laughs> Time is not debatable, Joe. Time is a flat circle. <laughs> I don't even know. We're not going to dive any deeper than those words that you just uttered. Eight o'clock, we say we're going to film the podcast. Production team is here. At seven. And you showed up at? 8.02. Can't happen. It can't happen. I'm being dead serious, too. I am, too. I got no excuse. You should be in here helping them. I'd probably break something, but I would like to help. <laughs> There's nothing stopping you from helping. All I'm saying is you cannot be a rookie in the content game to be on camera. This is a luxury it here is. at 100 Thieves. It is. To be quite honest. And no, you cannot be late. You can't be late. Just can't happen. Yeah. I said it seriously off camera. I'm saying it seriously on. You cannot be late anymore. Yeah, I got it. I got and no we are going to have a running total for the times you are late. Even the watch party for VCT. You're probably the reason why we lost to Fnatic. I said be there at 9 a.m. for match start. You showed up at 9.20. You pulled up. You said, well, I was going to stop and get some bagels, and then you didn't even show up with bagels. Okay. Yeah. Well, Mind you, you know I don't eat, eat breakfast. You're just pulling things out of your ass. I did. I would have loved to get bagels, but again, I was out to like two with Shane, j and Spencer, and... uh Shane just got out of a relationship. He needed some guys to go out with. I drank all day. Went to bed at like 3.30. I was a little 20 minutes late. We played foot though. We won that. It was a great day. As much as I appreciate the fact that you're supporting Shane and his new independence, you're also supporting your friends on the other side, which is me and Haley in this match. You just You can't give me your word, shake my hand, look me in the eye, and then not follow through. I would never do that to you. Well, I don't. I'm not someone that wakes up at like 6 a.m. every day like you. I don't care about that. I'm a night owl. I, 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 I'm working on it, all right? I'm working on it. All right. It. All right. Well, it, 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 I, this is not a working on it situation. That, this is, well, for this, for work, We're yes, speaking have, in absolutes. I have no, Time is an absolute. You have to be here before 8 o'clock. I have no excuse for today. All but right. for the Valorant match, that... That's but, fair. I yeah. don't care about that. As but well. for no, for this, yes, I should not have been. Late. So we're gonna. I am now part of Joe's mistake. So production team, I would like to apologize. For the fact that we were late, we're not going to dig into this any longer. Won't happen again. Correct. Correct. All right. So we are back for episode number three. We got the elephant out of the room, and the other elephant actually <laughs> yeah. is blue raspberry is in my hand. <laughs> I was going to go pour this in the cup, and then I realized that we're probably spacing these episodes out episodes out once per week and the announcement has hopefully come and if not this episode it got delayed until this was out because we're not going to make logan and the entire production team go through and blur out this can (laughs) as we've had to do that in the past where we had something up on the desk and they had to sit through and just blur everything out for an hour and felt Mm -hmm. awful about it but man am i excited i hope people enjoy this flavor as much as we've been hyping it up I actually agree with Joe with what he said in the last episode that blue raspberry has kind of ruined the other flavors for me. Strawberry kiwi is still, you know, S tier mm-hmm. with blue raspberry, but I look forward to this every morning and it's just a taste that I haven't gotten sick of yet. And that's the beautiful thing about strawberry kiwi too. Like I could yeah. drink that every day, but it's almost like somebody broke the wall of my head. <laughs> what else is out there? <laughs> yeah. And now I can't go back. We got to remember too. We've been drinking the three primary flavors now for like over a year. Yeah, probably point. a year and a half. <laughs> yeah, I think that's but, been the most exciting part about Juvie is just the the flavor exploration. Mm-hmm. You know, I think the the initial hump that we need to get over is just getting these cans in hand and getting people to try it for the first time, because it's tougher. I was talking to my chat. I know it's inherently not regular behavior to order an energy drink off of a website yeah. but we're working on getting in storefront so that you can have a little bit more convenience in getting juvie into your system at a gas station or a grocery store but you know baby steps we're moving slow but sure mm-hmm. we're true with our conviction around this drink <laughs> so hey listen if you guys want to try blue raspberry we're also available well we're going to be av- available on amazon later in march mm-hmm. but if you go to drinkjuvie.com right now 
It is 10% off using code NATA checkout. And then even without a code, you get free shipping. So that was an, another hurdle that people had to get over. Shipping is completely free. Blue Raspberry, if you drink energy drinks, you need to give this a try just once. And if you don't like it, you need to let us know because I will be shocked. This flavor, it's just, I feel like it's impenetrable to feedback. It really is. Um, do you want to talk about it? I mean, do you want to give your review? Do you want to talk a little bit about it, the actual flavor? Well, I think I just did. Okay. I love it. It's so good. Taste is such a subjective thing. Like, what do yeah. you want? I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not, uh, this isn't a Michelin star review. <laughs> it's uh, Blue Raspberry. I think this is a cornerstone flavor in not only beverages that are energy drinks, but slushies. You've had them since you were a kid. Mm -hmm. It's a dangerous combination. I don't, I don't know who decided to put the blue in front of a raspberry, but they were fucking onto something. <laughs> they, <laughs> they knew what they were doing. <laughs> they knocked that out of the park. Why they don't we have green raspberry? What would green raspberry taste like? I, it's eight o'clock. I can't even comprehend that right now. Yeah, we're not going to take any guesses. <laughs> All right. So the first two episodes, I think, second, you were feeling more confident with how the recording definitely. went. We definitely got into some deeper topics. We haven't even uploaded it yet, so I don't know how people are going to respond to it. But in general, I think we found our pacing for the mm -hmm. second, and it, just a, a, a various amount of topics covering gaming, our personal lives, 100 Thieves. We talked about the layoffs. So if you haven't seen it, go check it out. But I don't want the first 10, ep 10 minutes of this episode to be about housekeeping. We got to get into the mix. Kai yeah. Sinet, 300,000 subscribers mm -hmm. on Twitch. That is an unfathomable number for me. It's wild. To break the all-time record, uh, the two biggest creators, I think, you know, on YouTube, live streaming and Twitch, Speed. Aiden. Speed, no, Speed and Kai Sinet. Both African-American oh, yeah. entertainers. Mm -hmm. I actually think it's pretty unbelievable to think that both of them are at the top of the entertainment and gaming community, content in general. 30 days live streaming straight. Kai is just a fucking workhorse, man. Yeah. And this morning, actually, when we woke up and I was getting the crusties out of my eyes, Haley rolled over and showed me an uh, uh, Instagram comment. Drake commented on one of the posts about Kai Sinet's record-breaking day and said... He added Twitch, literally added Twitch, Drake did, and said, you better give that boy 50 M's, pay the man, oh. something along those lines. Yeah, they probably it, won't, unfortunately. Well, I was a little off on my number. I was saying 100 million or <laughs> don't go nowhere, but it's just wild to think that he actually hit that number. Mm -hmm. I can't believe there are 300,000 people, you know, uh, barring gifted subs and yada, 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 yeah. that have paid $5, if not more, to support this man. So I just want to say congratulations. Yeah. You know, we were at TwitchCon, and I, I, I think I've told this story on a podcast before, so I'll make it quick. But when we were uh, architecting our marketing launch campaign for Juvie, Sam Keen, uh, who's been the you know basically the the president of Juvie, building it from the ground up, uh, with a couple other members on his team and myself here at Hundred Thieves, he actually had Kai Sinet in a deck to be one of the you know foundational creators that we launch with, and in my mind, I didn't know who he was. I I, I mean I, I mean that out of just pure ignorance, uh, not out of a lack of respect. I just truly since. 100 Thieves started, I just haven't been paying as much attention. Like back in the day on YouTube, there wasn't somebody popping up without me watching their channel for a couple minutes a day because I was so locked in on how do I make my channel better. And over these last six years, just being so close to the business, I just haven't been on Twitch as often. I haven't been on YouTube. I mean, I logged into my YouTube channel for the first time like uh, six months ago. So just completely out the game. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I had creators in my mind that I thought would work really well. So I'm like, Sam, just let me kind of handle this in my head so that I, I'm confident for the launch. And six months later, when we finally do end up releasing Juvie to the public, little did I know Kai Snet was just going to get bigger, 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 and bigger, and now be one of the biggest creators in the world. So I completely whiffed on that. But I, I felt very flattered when we were at TwitchCon. I went to uh, WME, one of my best friends, uh, is the head of gaming over there. He reps a bunch of your favorite creators, Tim, Cloaksy, and a, a number of others. And I was finishing up, had to go to the bathroom, and all of a sudden I hear, Nade, Nade. And I turn around, and it's Kai sitting with all his boys and his family. 
and he dapped me up and I, I told him the same story. I'm like, look, brother, I'm happy for you, man. I, I just want you to know, like, I, <laughs> we got to work together in some capacity down the road. Obviously, you're a lot more expensive now, deservingly so. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, I thought it was cool just as like an old head for somebody who's like new and taking over the world that he knew who I was. That was something that I'll never forget. That's yeah. pretty cool. <laughs> no, yeah, right, rightfully deserved for Kai, too. I mean, he's like such a new, I feel like unique breed to to just live streaming in general like he's just like a pure entertainer like yeah. he's just up there to entertain no matter what i'm trying to figure out what was going on the other week though because there was a lot of controversy and people were really upset there's that snippet of him and another guy with two girls sitting behind a bar mm -hmm. and a lot of people were saying that she was giving him a hand job did you see this? No, I didn't see it. Oh, yeah. Super controversial. <laughs> no. And this is at the same time while Aiden's like streaming porn on kick and he's yeah. going through like his Andrew Tate chapter. Yeah. And then his half brother came out mm -hmm. and said that he's been erratic and he's not talking to his family anymore. Man, I, I it's just been a whirlwind. And I, I wonder if any of this is architected by them. I doubt it. Yeah. I doubt it. I don't know. That's like, <clears throat> I feel like that takes as much as, you know, you could give credit or like anyone would want to architect that in terms of like actually thinking through that plan and like executing it. I don't know. Like some of the stuff Aiden's saying, uh, or even with like the hand job, I feel like it's just hard to be like, oh yeah, okay, now we're going to like. I'm gonna fake a hand job on stream today. Yeah. And then like we'll we'll hopefully this goes viral. Or, like, and he doesn't we'll need to either, actually. Yeah. I was more so about Aiden, I guess. Mm -hmm. Just because a lot of it feels just far off the beaten path of what he was doing and saying on stream before he's sort of hit this next level. Yeah. I mean, he was always making funny jokes and like very edgy jokes. Like back in the day when he'd have Bronny on stream, he'd be mm -hmm. like, I'm going to fuck you. Like <laughs> yeah. just wild, just wild. And I, I thought all of it was hilarious. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't sit there and watch a stream, so I'm not co-signing everything that he's done. Yeah. But for Aiden, it just, with him going over to kick, you would think doing something a polarizing or a little divisive just to bring more eyes over there to see what's happening. Yeah. I mean, it's been a playbook for a lot of creators now. We've seen drama is just the quickest way. I, I'm beating a dead horse here. We've said it a million times on the Courage and Eight Shot show. Mm -hmm. Anytime a creator who has a little bit of momentum goes through drama that a lot of people are paying attention to, it's almost as if when they come back from a suspension on Twitch or a break from YouTube, when they upload that first video, hit that live stream button for the first time in a while, it's like the, the dam was broken and yeah. everything started flooding and they just got bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. Well, yeah, Kai's, this subathon started right off of a ban. He was banned and then, uh, like, announced he was coming back for a subathon. But I saw the video. I th I, th I think she might have been stroking him. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 bro, I had the magnifying glass. Yeah, I was just saying, like, look at I'm that like glass. Is, is that actually happening right now? I mean, I'm going to go have, I'm going to have to go back and do my research. You're a sick ass. <laughs> I mean, you can't see anything, but like with, she's like got her hand around his hip and on the other side and there's movement there and a rhythm. Very bizarre. Right. <laughs> maybe, but maybe. I don't know. I, listen, I'm not trying to focus on the negatives here because a triumphant moment on yeah. Twitch, 300,000 subscribers, something I'd never thought I'd ever see in my lifetime. Good for him. Twitch better give him a bag. What uh, was your peak sub count? Well, my my explosion and growth on Twitch happened even before sub button existed. Yeah, uh, I think my peak sub count was around like twenty five k when Warzone one released, and yeah, I just never was a part of the Twitch meta. Like back in our day, it was back in my day, <laughs> you were just running ads. You know, me and. Scump would have like 13, 15,000 viewers like streaming scrims. We would get off stream, but keep it live to go to Chipotle, which was like 10 minutes away in Schaumburg, Illinois. And I would get on my phone and I would have TeamViewer set up on my phone so that I can go into my, because they didn't have like a mobile dashboard back then. Yeah. Didn't have any infrastructure on the back end. Uh -huh. So I TeamViewer into my computer while I was in line waiting at Chipotle and run ads. That's brilliant. Well, I mean, at that time, certain parts of the year, you know, if you're in Q4, when new Call of Duty comes out, 
ad rates were crazy. And mm -hmm. that was, again, the only way we were eating. So we were just running ads that were banging. I mean, you, you would see the graph on the back end of money that you made. It would take like 24 hours to update. Mm -hmm. And so it was always waking up like a kid on Christmas, like, well, what happened? Yeah. You know, you'd have like these $2,500 bangers and we're like, oh shit, yo, we're doing it. We're doing it. But I, I was actually surprised how much my community showed out when Warzone first came out with that sub button, just mm -hmm. because I've never really had to, never did that song and dance. So that, that was a cool moment for me. Yeah. I think my favorite moment on stream was actually coming back from MLG TV. This was after I retired from Call of Duty. I, I actually streamed it out of the Red Bull Studios. I remember it to this day. And I was playing like H1Z1 or something like that. And I had 98,000 viewers. That was a very rewarding day. Uh, and then I didn't stream for like two months after that. I was so excited to come back to Twitch. And then I realized, I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm a full-time YouTuber. Like, this is where I'm really making headway. I got 300,000 people watching every vlog I upload. So I just never got back on the streaming grind. But nowadays, rank play Call of Duty has been mm -hmm. fucking awesome. We could talk about that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was my peak, I would say. 25,000 subs. Before we get off the topic of Cotton, Aiden, and Speed, did you see anything about the Jake Lucky, Aiden, train wrecks interview last night? They did that interview last night? Yeah. Oh, my God, no. Do you have yeah. any spark notes? Uh, it was, yeah, a little bit. I mean, it was pretty choppy of an interview. Like, Well, with those three, I can't yeah. imagine anybody <laughs> got a word in over the other. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So train wrecks basically was there. He comes into the stream. First of all, they start like 35 minutes early. They're like, oh, we're going live at 7. Start 35 minutes early. Oh, these early. guys already made it, and they're early? <laughs> yeah. And you're late? <laughs> okay. What's worse, though, being 30 minutes late earlier or 30 minutes late? What? To start, okay, never mind. <laughs> never mind. The fuck does that even mean, Joe? <laughs> People miss 30 minutes of the interview thinking it started at 7. That's also on time. It's the internet. There's a VOD. They'll find it. <laughs> yeah, okay. All fair. right, let's go back. <sighs> Just had to throw that jab in, didn't you? <laughs> it's not a jab. It's reality, Joe. We got to live in reality. God, God fucking damn it. You're right. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, yeah, Trainwrecks was basically there to act as Aiden's, like, lawyer. Or, like, oh, no. to, to oh, advise God. him on what... <laughs> yeah, so it's already brewing for something nice. But uh, the lawyer who was, like, I'm not going to say anything. I'm just here, Aiden, like, to back you up and make sure, like, I don't want a 2v1 you, Jake. Fast forward, like, 10 minutes, <laughs> Trainwrecks just takes over. And he's talking all about kick and obviously promoting it. And he made some really good points, honestly. Um, and he compared it to Mixer and the platform wars and talking about how when Mixer started, Twitch was still at its peak and, um, you know, it was just an alternative to Twitch itself, but Kick is offering 95.5 and um, he feels as though Twitch is dying and all of this, so he feels like it has some legs. Um, but overall, the interview itself, um, it was okay, I would say. I'd give it like a, like a C plus. Well, grit. I'm trying to figure out my I, I I didn't really care about the kick conversation. Where I want to yeah. go back and watch is what was the dynamic between Jake and Aiden? Yeah, because Aiden sent that message like keep yourself safe with a smiley face. Yeah. Jake has been condemning the, the the way that Aiden's been carrying himself, showing porn to underage kids mm -hmm. on stream, and this that and the other. Did they like beat the brakes off this thing, or was it pretty civil? It was uh it was pretty civil. They were both like very much themselves. Obviously, I think. I will say I think Jake held his own. I think a lot of the questions he was asking though were like super speculative in terms of like he didn't really dig at Aiden um, as much as I personally would have hoped for. I would have liked to see him like ask some really hard hitting questions, but um, Jake was very much himself. They tried to get him to say fuck for like five minutes. He wouldn't do it because he say frick. Aiden was himself as well, <laughs> like called out that it was whack. Um, but I fuck with Jake Lucky, but. 30 or 30 plus year old saying frick just he's 30 plus oh yeah i thought he was like 25 no he's he's he, i think he's in his mid 30s oh uh, okay i when somebody's when people say frick mm -hmm. it just gives me the heebie jeebies like yeah brother come on <laughs> it's it's a word it's not offensive yep. we're adults <laughs> yeah yeah so that's freaking weird man <laughs> 
Yo, Jake, I know you're going to watch this and probably clip this. I love you, brother, but the Frick thing just throws me through a whirl. I can't wrap my head around it. My response, my response that is that, fake. That's weird as Frick. It is. It, it's fuck. You could say weird as fuck. You're on kick. You could say that. Can you give me the answer? What, you got wait, an explanation say, for this? Wait, say what, Aiden? He can't say fuck. Guys, I love we're it. not here to focus. We're not here to focus. You can't this. say fuck, bro. I love this, Trey. Trey, I love this. Oh. Fuck. All right, say this then. Say it in this context. Instead of saying, okay. Go with me. Jake lucky, Jake sucky, Jake fucky. That Same. you could do, right? You can do that. Jake lucky, Jake sucky, Jake frick. Okay, fair. <laughs> um, I'll try not to be freaking late next time. <laughs> we still have another episode. Frick after you, that. dude. Frick you. <laughs> yeah, frick you. This is freaking but, disgusting behavior out of you. But uh, yeah, after like 45 minutes, I turned it off. Okay. Like, they're just going in circles. Well, so. I still feel like we cover this at surface level. Maybe we roll a couple clips in the podcast just yeah. to give somebody a North Star. I mean, this is definitely not a news network, <laughs> but we got to talk about it a little bit. We'll yeah. see how that plays out. Just I mean, let the people know what happened more than anything. Yeah. I, I don't know if I necessarily agree with Train saying Twitch is dying. I think creators need to be really careful we we had a long discussion about how they should be using their time and i'm not mm -hmm. saying what i would do is right but going over to kick i just don't think it's going to be as easy even when you have a 95 to 5 split on subs you gotta consumer behavior we talk about energy drinks instead of a website they're buying at a grocery store bro a lot of people are just preconditioned now to just go to twitch and browse through mm -hmm. and that's part of their routine every day when they wake up yeah and Mixer, they tried to go head to head with Twitch in terms of features and what they offered and make the user experience pretty similar. And Kick does look very, very similar. Yeah. But I, I just don't know if people will ever rally around that website to find new creators. I mean, mm -hmm. we said Twitch doesn't have discoverability as it is, but just in terms of what you do when you open up Google Chrome or Firefox or Safari, Going to kick is not going to be a normal behavior. And I actually, as, as, as small of a comment as that might seem, I actually think it is a big barrier of entry. 100%. But I do find it fascinating, though, that kick is more the opposite of Mixer as the playbook. They went after Microsoft with Shroud and Ninja and these really uh, brand safe creators. Mm -hmm. But Kick, on the other hand, is basically taking the drama route, taking the most controversial creators and giving them a platform. And it's probably the most unique approach that we've seen from all of these platforms to this day. And if anything is going to work after watching the, the normal playbook fail mm -hmm. time and time again, at least it's different. Yeah. At least the approach is different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm very curious. I think I was I was very kick is gonna fail pre interview last night, um, but I'm curious. I'm curious to see what's gonna happen. I think if they can last long enough to get out of the gate, they might have a chance. Um, Train made an interesting point too about. Uh, one of his biggest frustrations is right now everybody thinks Kick is a place where you can go and just do whatever you want. Like example, like Aiden streaming porn and all these other smaller creators uh, doing the same thing. And he says like, obviously we're gonna have to update our terms of service. Like that's not what this is. Um, but if they can, you know, again just survive long enough, I think there's, I think it's gonna be interesting. I bet Drake does a stream on Kick in the next month. Well, yeah, he's sponsored by Stake too, right? He's yeah. got to deal with them. Yeah. I won't be surprised. We'll see. Mm -hmm. That's my prediction. I bet Drake does a stream on Kick over the next month. Lock it in. Lock it in. Take it <laughs> to the fucking bank. Yeah. Man, I'll tell you what. The last couple of days have been really weird for me, man. I've, I, I, I feel bad in a sense just because I don't know him personally, but the internet can just be such a terrible place to be having mental issues and just heavy shit in your life that can make make the mind teeter in the wrong direction sick from sentinels mm -hmm. i uh i reached out to some people that know him well just to see like uh, how they can help or what is going on trying to get a better idea of the situation but it's it's bizarre over the last 10 years I have seen probably about four or five or six creators have very similar 
attributes and very similar through points of the behavior that they've displayed where the ending had to, they needed to be checked in somewhere. Can you break down the situation? From what I understand, allegedly, I feel like I just got to say that. And I, I, get, I don't mean this as disrespect towards Sick for any of his fans out there or Sick if you watch this yourself, but it's you're having a very public display and other people are going to talk about it, so we're going to talk about it too. Yeah. From what I understand, Sick, who was a former Valorant player for Sentinels, he went to Brazil where the major was happening and his girlfriend at the time found out that he flew a woman out to Brazil or a woman that was living in Brazil that he met through solo queue while he was there playing the first girl that he meets, he like flies her to the event. And then he's posting Instagram stories of them hanging out. And his girlfriend at the time started to leak DMS and started to address the situation. She said that he's cheating on her, but they were in a half open relationship. She brings up the fact that, he encouraged her to have sex with other men and he wanted to have the same ability, a half open relationship. I've never heard, mm -hmm. but he would have to ask her, his girlfriend for permission to do that. Mm -hmm. And so you have this other guy who I actually blocked on Twitter at the time that I, I was just on Twitter while all the esports layoffs were happening. And this guy who's a head of content at NNRG was, you know, raising up his glasses, having an I am very smart moment, like telling esports like executives how stupid they are and this is how you make money. And I don't even know the guy, but I was just like, dude, I don't want to see this on my timeline. He starts sharing DMs of him talking to his girl, six girl, and was just like fishing for comments and saying, oh, so he's a cuck, LMAO, yada, 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 just adding, like, fuel to the fire. What like, what are, you what are you talking to this fucking girl in the first place for anyways? <laughs> yeah. Like, it ain't your place, brother. <laughs> Unless you're, like, labor. best friends with this woman and you've been for a long time, it ain't none of your fucking me. business. Yeah. Uh, so then he tweets out these DMs. He throws his money in the pot. And then Sick uh, has just been very erratic ever since. You know, he's saying... And using very common phrases where I need to rest. Oh, I, 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 I'm just so tired. I have to rest. And then to, last night he tweets out, there's actually no time for rest. I need to spread the message. And it, it's just very similar to other gaming creators that were having, I don't even want to put it in quotes, like manic yeah. uh, tendencies. And this is all unraveling on the internet, bro. And Twitter is the worst place for somebody to have an episode like that, to be going through something really tough mentally yeah. where they might actually need professional help just to get the, chemi the, the chemical balance in your brain back to even and where it should be. Um, and especially when you have uh, a, a woman and deeply rooted emotional uh, connections that are just being burned at the flame yeah. in front of your eyes and the entire internet is... is, is you know, throwing in their opinion and, and either supporting you or just roasting your shit. Yeah. It is a very hard place to be, especially for gamers. Cause I think more times than not, not to, you know, speak to a stereotype, but more times than not, a lot of these guys who meet girls through the gaming community, these are their first relationships. Yeah. And I don't wish that upon anybody to have like their first breakup in their first relationship be a very public display. I don't think that's uh, enough to warrant the behavior that he's been showing. Mm -hmm. I just think he needs to get some help. Yeah. And if you're dealing with that mentally and you don't, like somebody who's having a crazy moment, they don't know that they're actually crazy. These thoughts seem so normal to them. Yeah. And that's why he's, I mean, he's got a five hour stream VOD that I was watching last night and it's rough, brother. Yeah. He, any thought that comes to his mind, he says it out loud. Yeah. And it, 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 it's not, you, you just have to watch it to really understand. Mm -hmm. He's like, no, 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 you're, you're, you don't understand. That's mean. You don't talk about this. No, Jet, I'm going B. No, I, I, I'm, I'm going back to A. No, we, we, there's a dart. Wow, he got me. That's good. He's really good. Everybody yeah. keep pushing. No, we, he, needs, he, we, we, he needs to get some help. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, it feels weird to actually be talking about drama because we, I, we tend not to do it on the Courage yeah. and H-Out show, but 
I, I think we're doing ourselves a disservice if we're not talking about what's relevant in the gaming community right now. Yeah. I don't. Again, I don't know Sick very well. I hope he can find help. I hope yeah. his family can help push him in the right direction. And I think everybody that's watching at home, even though some people might find it entertaining, it's somebody's life yeah. and they don't have full clarity on what they're saying, what they're doing, yeah. how they're being viewed. And it's just a tough perspective for any young kid to be watching you know, one of their favorite players going through something like this and not fully understand the gravity and the nature of the situation. So I would just ask everybody to be patient and hopefully it comes to a resolution that helps yeah. him find his way back to who he was and find some clarity. So yeah. hope he's okay. Oh, well, mm -hmm. man, everybody goes through it, but it's, it's just fuel to the fire when it happens on the internet. Yeah. Jesus. All right, what do we got on our notebook? I'm trying to think what's else been happening in the world. Uh, it's hard to read it when it's written in crayon, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, nice, Joe. That was good. I like that. Thanks. Thanks for warming up. The juvie, the juvie's kicking in. So 8 a.m. is a tough ass, too, for a podcast. Brain's not firing all the way yet, but we're doing an okay job. Well, it was certainly firing when I was sitting on the exit. I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm going to be late. Like This is not going to be good. So... Um, knew what I was walking into there. Do you want to talk about, uh, I think we should talk a little bit about Jake Paul fight. Jake Paul fight would be a good topic of discussion. Yeah. So I actually thought that this fight was going to be completely scripted. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know how often that actually happens in professional boxing. I mean, I'm sure it's happened more than a handful of times. So much money on the line, betters and, uh, the fight camps and, and, and each individual, they're they're definitely in on the entertainment mm -hmm. uh, to a certain capacity, but there's definitely fights where these guys truly fucking hate each other, trying to beat the living shit out of one another. You know, yeah. like I think Khabib and McGregor are a great example of there is no way in hell that those guys are actually friends off yeah. off offline. Yeah, that was just pure. I'm gonna fucking kill you. Yeah. Uh, but with Jake Paul and and Tommy Fury and uh, with you know his dad and his brother. Um, on both sides, there's definitely communication between the two. So I wasn't sure if they were going to set this up so that Jake wins the first fight and then there's a rematch. And maybe maybe Tommy Fury winning uh, by decision in the, uh, you know, going to uh, the judges, maybe that was part of the plan. And Jake Paul, they have another, another bout and he ends up winning this one. But they definitely sold some pay-per-views and, sure. and had the entire internet watching. I, I've been surprised by the Sunday uh, fight cards. Uh, you know, for me, I always envisioned Saturday night, but mm -hmm. I think Sunday was actually perfect because it was three o'clock in the afternoon happening in, in uh, was it in the UK or Saudi Arabia? Uh, Saudi Arabia. Yeah. So I actually thought the window uh, for people to watch was was perfect. There was no major like sporting events happening. All Star Weekend for the NBA, Super Bowl it had already passed. So. Their timing was impeccable. Yeah. But I actually thought the fight was uh, something that Jake Paul needed. I mean, I know people want to talk about the strength of opponent that Tommy Fury has had in the past, and some people question his validity as a true undefeated professional boxer. Mm -hmm. But I don't think anybody expected Jake Paul to perform as well as he did uh, in comparison to the fighters that he's uh, fought in the past. They were old MMA fighters, uh, had a couple like YouTube boxing matches, but a lot of people have given him criticism up until this point. And he went eight rounds and had some moments where I think people really thought he would win. Yeah. Uh, even one of the judges had him winning the fight. Yeah. And so I, I, I actually thought it was really entertaining and I thought it was a great boxing match. I'm not a big boxing fan as it is. I mean, yeah. if there's enough momentum behind the names that are fighting like there, I would, I would, kill myself it, well <laughs> in game in game, I, in, in game. <laughs> I, I would do a lot to go back and watch somebody like mike tyson in his prime if yeah. social media existed with the just the image and and and, and the just the killer mentality like when i watch these tiktok fan montages of tyson or of mike tyson's old fights he looks like he came out of hell to just <laughs> kill who was ever on the side he was on the other side of the yeah. ring he was like placed on earth to just murder and oh God. 
If, no, if we. I mean, that that was Mike per, Mike Tyson's perception. Yeah. If we had an intergalactic fight where we had to send our champion. Yeah. Uh, we would have sent Mike Tyson. Yeah. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Uh, and for me, I just. I was. I've been so infatuated by the YouTube boxing, but I. I just think that. Jake Paul has done it better than anybody. Like he's picked good opponents, you know, fighting Anderson Silva. Yeah. That's fucking amazing. And then to, you know, parlay this into a fight against somebody like Tommy Fury. Uh, he, he put it on an Instagram story where it's like, oh, I'm sad because I lost, but I just made $30 million. It's like, <laughs> yeah. holy fuck, man. Let's not forget it's a business I don't think, at the end of the day. It, even if you hate the Paul brothers, even if you f cannot fucking stand the sight of them, I have to tip the cap. You went from being a, a, a Disney star with Olivia Rodrigo to then everybody hating the content that you're making on YouTube to now being a poster card, uh, the money ticket for a boxing match. And they're making obscene, absurd amounts of cash. Yeah. How can I hate on that? transition sounds like you might need to get in the ring <laughs> I'll, I'll get the living shit beat out of me brother uh, these hands ain't got no fighting in them brother would you would you take just getting your ass beat for like 30 mil though yeah yeah same. i'd get my ass beat for 30 million dollars get my ass beat for like fifty thousand. <laughs> you know and, and for, on top of that too, <laughs> we can set that up <laughs> we can make that, that. that's not out of the we question, got we got though. budget we got budget for that i <laughs> Sponsoring the Courage and Eight Shot Show. <laughs> yeah. Let's kill this motherfucker. <laughs> but Jake Paul, Tommy Fury, it was a great fight. It was entertaining. And I think both fighters put on a good show. Yeah. You got to tip the cap like you said to Jake. And I think it was cool, too. You mentioned, like, everybody hating his content. Um, and I think it's just cool to see, like, I was thinking about it with Logan, too. He's become... I'm going to give you some real-time feedback. And audience, I'm sorry if this... Is annoying to you? I've been watching The Bachelor, okay? And every other word that comes out of all of their mouths, not just the women, the men as well, they say like oh, every shit. other word. Like Tommy Fury, like uh, Jake Paul, like. Yeah. And Am I saying it? Well, you're in an uncomfortable position right now because I'm, I'm sure that I do it not nearly as much as you, but I definitely do it. I look back at our podcast, the first two. And I, I really have to work on this. You're like every other word right now. Okay. I know I sound like a fucking psychopath. No, this guys. is good. I'm comfortable with that. I'm comfortable with being insane. This is good. You got to just pay attention. <clears throat> I got to slow the brain down. Somebody, no, you don't have to slow the brain down. You just have to realize, uh, I've watched a TED talk about this, uh, about public speaking. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with taking time to collect your thoughts. Yeah. A lot of people feel as if when a camera's on and the microphone's in front of them, that they have to be going. Yeah. They have to be going. Yeah. And their they're, they're mouth's trying to catch up to their thoughts, and it just forces you to use a lot of filler words. Well, I appreciate And the only it. reason why I'm saying it is because of The Bachelor. And I just had this conversation with Haley last week. Well, I appreciate that. I'd rather you tell me that than me say like for an hour and a half. So, thank you. Yeah. Um, there's that. As well. there it is job, Joe. Look at us communicating. Well, I just use um as a filler word. Um's okay. I mean, it just... I don't want to say that either. It just though. gets redundant and it starts to annoy me. Yeah. But again, well, I no. I'm psychotic. So a lot of people at home probably weren't even noticing it. Well, I appreciate it because this is also pushing me out of my comfort zone and it's helping me public speak and be able to... Well, this doesn't really constitute as public speak. Being in front of the camera... Yes. Regardless. Yes. yes. I'm, now I would, I'm just digging into you <laughs> well, I would and everything like, you say. I would like for Tanner and whoever else is editing it to not have to like trim out a million likes or ums too. Well, you, we're not going to trim that. It's a podcast anyways. Yeah, regardless. There's not much trimming. There shouldn't be that much trimming. Regardless, I appreciate the feedback and no I don't, problem, I don't no consider problem. you being an asshole about that. So, but. We got to talk about rank play. COD ranked? Yeah. I Let's know there's been different iterations of this conversation. But I'm going to speak my piece right now. For all the shit that we have given Activision and Treyarch and Infinity Ward and Sledgehammer and every developer that's ever worked on Call of Duty, for the years that we have been asking for rank play, we had an a, a, a iteration of rank play in World War II. I didn't play it. Uh, from what I could tell, people were grinding it. And 
back in Black Ops 2, we had League Play. That was uh, a pivotal moment for competitive Call of Duty because it actually opened a lot of the casual players' eyes to what competitive formats are, Hardpoint, Capture the Flag, Search and Destroy, and gave them a playground to mm -hmm. actually go compete instead of having to sign up for game battles or UMG, what have you. Other ways to play Call of Duty off the beaten path of just normal multiplayer. And I continued to give Activision a lot of harsh feedback because even after they say they're working on rank play, when it, kind of, when it finally comes to fruition, it's never the product that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with games like League of Legends or Valorant or Overwatch or Apex, games that are much younger than Call of Duty, but somehow, some way, we have never found the right systems for uh, the multiplayer experience. And they never have it prepared to launch with the game. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a, a, a very short window with Call of Duty. You've basically got six months of the life cycle of a game until they're already promoting the next game that's coming out six months later. Mm -hmm. So the interest is already wavering from the public. And so when we start introducing rank play, and previously the product wasn't great, in February, there's no interest in it. Nobody fucking cares because nobody's even playing the game anymore. I don't think Warzone 2 has been the hit that Call of Duty's been looking for. People's attention span on that game was done yeah. in, 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 in three weeks' time. And people were vocally hating this game on TikTok. Numbers were down. Player count just got cut in half week over week over week. So for me... For them to finally introduce a new iteration that Treyarch has been building, they launch it later than we would like. But man, they they might have they might have found some gold in their hands. I I have to give them a round of applause because this is the first time in Call of Duty history where people are actually talking and playing and and living the entire rank play experience. I think we talked about it a little bit on one of the first two episodes, but my TikTok. For you, page again, very dialed algorithm. They do a great job. But the amount of engagement, I'm not just being served rank play content because I talk about it, I play it, and it makes sense for my digital profile. But they're talking about it, and there's unbelievable amounts of engagement with it. I mean, Kenny uploaded a, a, a clip of him just ranking up to top 250 for the first time. Mm -hmm. And this was two days ago. It had 10,000 likes, it had <laughs> over 100,000 views. And every single rank play piece of content I have, whether it's here are the proper rotations for hardpoint, this is where you need to anchor spawns, or this is a nade spot for Mercado. I mean, from random accounts that videos aren't even produced very well, have over 10,000 likes on every single post. So I, I, I'm just foaming at the mouth to continue to play because the matches, even for me, as somebody that used to play at a professional level that's still trying to learn the game myself, even the games that I'm having at Crimson, I just ranked up to last night, for the most part, are very competitive. Now, granted, if I had, you know, Dashy and Draza and Octane on my team, it'd be a fucking blow up because those three guys know how to play the game better than anybody. Yeah. But for me, with where I'm at in my career, every match is competitive. Everybody's calling out. People are talking shit to each other in between rounds. Everybody's trying to win. Nobody cares about their stats. They just want to see you hit six rounds in search or three rounds in control or 250 points in hard point. Mm -hmm. So I just think this should be an eye-opening experience for what rank play can be for Call of Duty. And it's one thing for us as creators and, and players to say, oh, I know this will work. You just have to do it the right way. It's another thing for Call of Duty, especially you know the leads on these projects in the back end to say, no, 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 no. Call of Duty's always been casual. Like the people that play this game are going to work nine to five. They come home to play for a couple hours. They don't want to sweat. They don't want to know how bad they are in comparison to the other players. And so we need to keep everything hidden. We need to have skill-based matchmaking so that they can play in safe spaces and not feel uh, dejected and discouraged from playing more because they can't keep up with everybody else. But now, I, I, I don't know what the data looks like on the back end beyond what I've seen on Instagram and TikTok and YouTube, but I, it, it just feels different. It feels like there's actually a lot of people engaged in playing these, uh, this, this game mode of ranked play. Yeah. So I'm, I'm pretty jazzed up about it. The views are up uh, on our end. I, I feel like it, that's what you're alluding to just in terms of what you mentioned with the, con the engagement and everything. But Think about it, bro. If Draza was streaming to 
We had, if he was playing hard point off. public playlist or playing Warzone, which would have been the best avenue he could go down to get more people to watch him, he would still only have like 80 viewers. Yeah. And now every single night I go on Twitch and he's got 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 viewers. Yeah. And we're actually seeing a system where the best players in, in Call of Duty, not just the YouTuber, pub star, Warzone perceived best players, the best pound for pound mechanical and intellectual players that do everything right, they're actually having all the power in their hands, the most viewership they've ever seen. 100%. Even, even smaller Call of Duty pro players who would be sitting here with 50 viewers. I saw Parasite with 1,000. Yeah. So it, I, I, I'm just fucking elated that we finally have the right opportunity because this game, it's an incredible game to play. I mean, Call of Duty compared to Gears of War and Halo back in like the first person, third person shooter wars back in the day it was the first game that had a locked 60 FPS on console, smooth, yeah. buttery motion, tight controls, satisfying uh, audio cues when you get a headshot. Like they really did invent the meta for a lot of different mechanics in a game that a player might not think about. But to finally add that component that it was missing, rank play, I just think it's it, it just feels different. Yeah, and you mentioning how you're so harsh on Activision and Call of Duty, I think it's valid because the, they've just set the bar so high with what Call of Duty is, and I think a lot of the frustration, too, is like these last few years, everybody's just been asking for it. The community's been just dying for, for ranked play or something competitive just to for people to scratch that itch. Like, for myself, for other people my age, like... Sorry, I said it there. Um, Twice. Yeah. But it's like <laughs> three times. <laughs> get the counter up, Joe. We're about to get a shot collar. <laughs> yeah, that would actually be a good bit. Uh, Every time you say like, and it wasn't supposed to be there, a little buzz. Just Miko got banned for shot collar on Twitch. But good thing we're not on Twitch. Yeah, right, motherfucker. We gonna electrocute you. <laughs> <laughs> but point being. Uh, where was I? Here we go again. <laughs> keep up, Jeff. Come on. Keep up, keep up. But okay, yeah. So for someone like me, I'm pat. Like I play. I grew up. wasn't like super competitive when it came to video games. Was much more involved in sports and things like that. And once you get out of high school, like that's it, right? There's there's no competition for me except for like on the golf course, and I suck at golf too. So even for someone like me who's much more of a casual gamer, it's nice. To at least have the avenue or the outlet to be like, here's something that I can go compete in after like work or whatever and try and grind. Exactly. I, so. I think you boiled that down really well. And the reason why I brought this up at the beginning, because I, 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 I'm a very outwardly facing critic of the decisions Activision has made with Call of Duty. We have to celebrate their wins. I have to give them credit. We have to... Round of applause one yeah. more time. Yeah. Because now that they have this system built out, we're sitting here applauding them. And yes, I am asking for more. When Call of Duty launches, again, because they said they weren't going to make a new game. They said they were just going to give us like a digital content bundle for like, after they made record-breaking numbers with the release of Modern Warfare 2, They this was the first time we were going to be on a two-year cycle. A new Call of Duty wasn't going to come out till next year. They came out and said they were going to make this digital bundle and it's going to be like an entirely new game. And now there's, I'm not sure if it's been confirmed in this timeline, but they're making a new Call of Duty at the end of this year. They yeah. just can't pass up uh, that bottom line number of having another billion dollar moment. So, so they, they just need to have this ranked play system ready to go, integrated into the next Call of Duty, and we'll be smooth sailing. Question off of that for you. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts. You have... League of Legends, Valorant, Counter-Strike just hitting its peak concurrent uh, user base on Steam. And Apex just came out saying, we want to build a 10-year game. We want to make it the best it is. Keep iterating on what we currently have, continuing to make it better off feedback. Call of Duty, the complete opposite, right? As you just mentioned, releasing a new game every single year. I'm curious to hear your thoughts, revenue aside, because I know the business model and structure of selling a billion dollar game every year, but would you like to see Call of Duty in a perfect world go down 
that same avenue, or do you like having a different title with different gameplay every year? Well, back we've we've had this conversation at length uh, over the last. COD Four came out what 2007, 2023. Over the last ten to fifteen years, we've had this conversation, especially from the lens of competitive esports viewership. Right back in the day, we used to think that a new Call of Duty coming out every year was the worst thing possible for the competitive continuity of the game that we played. And then I think my sh- my focus actually shifted to an opposite view of that, where if Call of Duty 4 was just the game that they built on for the next 10 to 15 years, much like Apex is trying to do or much like Destiny has done, I just don't know if that game would have stayed afloat. Unless, you know, in this speculative, uh, hypothetical, they executed perfectly and they added in new maps and new weapons and 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 they did an amazing job of actually building out that roadmap to make the game interesting and fun and fresh i just think the new call of duty that comes every single november no matter how much the game has 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 fallen in terms of interest and passion from the from the community everybody comes back to check it out to yeah. give it another shot yeah it, it's one of those things that if you fell in love with Call of Duty at some point in your life, no matter how much you hated the last game, it's like a, a, a gambler showing up to Vegas saying, "I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna play. I'm, I'm not hitting the blackjack or the craps or the, or the slots or the roulette tables. I, I don't need it. I know what's gonna happen." Yeah, it's just like fuck. <laughs> I finally get out, and you pull me right back in. <laughs> yeah, you know. So people playing the game when a new iteration comes out, I think has become a superpower of Call of Duty, but. What what Call of Duty Mobile has done is probably the best argument for um, the you know the first example that we brought up because they 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 basically gone into the vault of the best Call of Duty maps from every game, the best weapons, and they put it into one big melting pot, and they're just giving players rank play and unbelievable customization, mm-hmm. great weapon skins and animations and cosmetic upgrades that just you know, hit that dopamine and serotonin receptors and 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 just keep you addicted to this game. Yeah. So I don't think there's a a perfect answer. I don't know what would actually happen, but the problem that I have is they there's just such a big disconnect from the style of game that you get from Infinity Ward to Sledgehammer to Treyarch. They're 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 similar but very different. Mm-hmm. I, and I think Infinity Ward has always done gunplay the best. I think Treyarch has always supported the, their games with the best maps and the best features in game. And then Sledgehammer, they did something very different with Advanced Warfare, which was very controversial at the time, and everybody was pissed. The entire internet was talking about, we need boots on the ground. Get rid of this fucking jetpack bullshit. I can't play this. And now, after a couple years, everybody's asking for Advanced Warfare 2. Let's give it another shot. So... I think people just get sick of Call of Duty so quickly and they just want something new and fresh, even if it's not the right answer or what we should actually be playing. People just want what they can't have. Yeah. And that's 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 actually why it's tough. Beyond the the terrible financial decisions and community decisions that Activision makes and terrible financial from the standpoint of what it means for the community, not for them, because they got that system down (laughs) and they are just printing cash. 100%. I think um, having consistency with the titles, uh, with the dev studios, would be a really big help. I don't know what that exact answer is, but yeah, I I, I don't know. We talk about Call of Duty so much on the Courage and Eight Shot show in my own personal stream, so I don't want to sit here and, 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 and just talk in redundancies. Yeah. But rank play just to put the cherry on top. It's a fantastic job. I hope players get and stay interested in it for a long time. Nowadays, the name of the game is just additional content. You know, a lot of people complain about Fall Guys, like, oh, they weren't ready for the moment, and it took them too long to bring the next level of Fall Guys. But that's just not a game that people are going to play consistently. Uh, Their player base has just been absolutely destroyed and has disappeared. But I think that's just the nature of the type of game Fall Guys was and not necessarily the decisions that the studio made. Mm-hmm. And I don't think people will actually do a great job of uh, extracting those as individual 
points of failure or success. Yeah. Some some games just aren't set up for longevity. Yeah. But Call of Duty certainly is, whether that was intentional or not. I would have loved for them to take their time on this next title, not drop a new game, but that gambler in me is just ready for a, 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 a new game. Yeah. But for as much as I thought I was going to hate Modern Warfare 2 after the first day of ranked, uh, you know, just get my back blown out. The, the, yeah. Oh, these kids were betting me over. Uh, but that was the first day. I'm a new man. Uh, it's like riding a bike. It is. It really is. It, it, the the biggest telltale sign for me, I need like one more week. And once I'm in iridescent and I start playing against pro players, mm-hmm. you know, I had this conversation with JCap on the couch when we were drinking the other day. And I asked him because they, 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 they just give so much credit to these young, passionate gamers. Yeah. You know, for a lot of, for a lot of, as much as we talk about age, uh, some of the best Counter-Strike players are in their late 20s, some even in their early 30s. Mm-hmm. I think the disconnect between uh, longevity for a player's career, it actually comes down to real-life pressure and your interests around the game. Yeah. You know, for J-Cap, no matter what people think of him as a player or as a coach, and he caught a lot of flack in the Cold War era of, of, of 100 Thieves and LA Thieves, he was an unbelievable player. Yeah. I mean, J-Cap was one of the best in the world, and I think he should be on top 10 lists from every professional player that played against him. I mean, the guy's won uh, three world championships. I played with him, played against him. Unbelievable, right? But when I go into that the LA Thieves room when they're scrimming, they're telling me that these Challengers kids are just different now. They're just, they're fucking unbelievable. Yeah. And I told them, I'm like, Brother, there is no way that you fucking believe that. Like, th- this game hasn't become this completely new era of how it's played and how you move on the map and what it takes to actually win. And the gunfights, Call of Duty is the one game where you have to have gun skill. Like, you have to be able to center up and hit your shots quicker than the other guy. Yeah. But the time to kill is so fast. You know, everything feels like it's 50-50 if you're not one of the best in the world. And I, I just asked him, I'm like, brother, you really don't believe that if you had the same passion as you did when you were 16 years old, if you could replicate that and compete today and just go hard 24-7, this is the only way that you're going to feed yourself. You're not going to get a real job. You got nothing else to worry about except to play Call of Duty. You're telling me that you don't think you'd be one of the best in the world? And I'm only, I, I asked him because... I just don't want to believe that. Yeah. I, I truly, and I don't know if it's ignorance or pride or ego. I just really don't believe with where I was and how badly I want to win when I was 17, 18 years old that these kids would be lapping me. Yeah. There's no fucking way. I just won't, I won't let it happen. I won't believe it. And when I put it in that perspective, I think J Cap sort of started to agree with what I was saying. But I, I, I'm just curious for my own pride how well after I learn the game and maybe a week is even a little bit ambitious. Give me like a month to understand every spawn, every timing, every route that I can take and search and the flow of each map. I, I, I just really don't believe that I, I, I couldn't stack up with the best again. Are we going to see uh Nate shot as a sub on the 2024 LA Thieves roster? I don't roster? know about all that. <laughs> I don't think those players would have me, but it's, it, it's fun. This game is a lot of fun. I yeah. thought, I, I, going back to where this conversation started, I thought that I was going to hate the game because how fast you do die. But once you understand the flow and what you can get away with, it really is a great time. Yeah. They need to get rid of Fortress, Search and Destroy. That map is not Search and Destroy at all. Mm-hmm. Any any map where you can meet the other team and the round can be over within 10 seconds. I mean, four seconds off spawn, even quicker than that you're already in a gunfight, that's not Surge. Yeah. I mean, if you go back for all my Call of Duty stands, if you go back and look at Ghosts, uh, think about the maps that we played. Freight is probably the only map that you can argue where players are dead pretty quickly, but on Octane, Warhawk, Sovereign, there are so many routes you can take and there was so much strategy behind it. And I, I actually feel bad for the professional players that are playing a map like Fortress in Search and Destroy because it's just a toss-up. Yeah. I don't think that map actually takes... Uh, a lot of skill and strategy. It's just like uh, 50-50s at all times. Uh, if they could expand the play, uh, the map count and the game mode uh, that are viable for each map uh, just a little bit more, I think this game is actually a lot of fun to play.
So are we going to see? A, are we going to see Road to Two Fifty for you? Road to Two Fifty. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, for me, I'm just up against time. I think that's the other part. Somebody clipped me talking shit to this kid yesterday. I, I. Going back to what I was talking about with JCap, I'm, I'm way too, half the reason why I retired was because I'm just too competitive. I didn't like the way that I acted when I would lose and how badly I wanted to win. I, 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 I can't explain my competitive nature in an in a, in articulate, efficient way. But when, when I want to win, whether it's golf or Call of Duty, anything competitive, I mean, we could be throwing a rolled up piece of paper into a trash can <laughs> and I, I, I want to win or like my life depends on it. So for me, it's just sitting in rank play. I got these kids that have been playing 12 hours days since the beginning when they had CDL mosh pit. They know the maps, yada, yada, yada. I'm just up against time. Mm -hmm. You know, people's SR that are top 250 now has gotten so high. And I, I, I've got into the swing of things super late. I, when, when, if a player wins, like a random four that I'm playing in rank play gets a control round on me and they're starting to talk shit. I literally want to pull up with a fucking 12 gauge, dude. And that's how, that's how angry I get. Yeah. So me roasting this kid yesterday, he was chirping in search and destroy. And I started to tee up. We won that map. And then we go to the hard point and we, I'm just fucking peacing, dude. I, I, I'm not missing a shot just in, in the fucking matrix. Like yeah. everything is flowing perfectly. Mm -hmm. I was waiting for that tick to finally come in and hit 250. And I, I, I hit Z on my keyboard. I let this kid have it. <laughs> Uh, I'm like, brother, you, if you're going to, if you're going to step up, you, you best not miss, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So it's uh top two fifty. I, I hope to get there, but I just don't know if I'll have enough time. Yeah. I've got other responsibilities. I got to go to this wedding next week and then I come back and we're wedding planning. I, I, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Makes sense. We've been talking about ranks for like an hour now. How long we've we been going? 55 minutes. All right. We'll probably scratch another topic if you got anything. I was just about to say that before we move on. Makes sense why that uh, footage of me waxing you in beer pong never went live on your YouTube channel. I don't remember that, to be honest with you. <laughs> no. Of course. It was probably just a terrible <laughs> vlog. Yeah, actually, the reason it didn't go up is because you're like, I sound like way too big of an asshole. I'm making fun of Joe too much. Yeah. There's been so many videos that uh, Logan in this room has edited for me that I just haven't uploaded because I did a poor job of structuring the vlog and I, I just nitpick my own shit too much. I always feel bad for Abby. Ab Abby was editing for us. Uh, we were trying to get into the flow of things with Nate Shop Plays and uploading on TikTok and Instagram more yeah. on short form. And Abby is, is a great editor, but my taste is just so specific because once I live a moment on stream, I'm already thinking before I even finish the stream how I'm going to edit this and yeah. what I think would work. And so Abby's perspective, when she would go in and edit, it would just be like a couple rounds of feedback off and I would get busy. I wouldn't have time or make the time to give her the right feedback. She would edit a clip and want to get it uploaded and I just wasn't happy with it. And it, I, I, I just, I wish I could turn off the critic in my own mind about my own content because I, I think it's slowed me down in a lot of ways. And even something for two, like John, uh, you know, there's been a lot of videos that him and I have filmed together that he's excited to watch on YouTube. And I don't end up uploading it because I'm just not happy uh, yeah. with how it how it came to be. Yeah. I'm definitely not like Mr. Beast level of intricate. Uh, and, you know, his manager, Reed, would tell me, like, they'll spend a couple million dollars on a video. And Jimmy's like, if, if, if that gets uploaded, you're all fired. Yeah. I don't, I don't think it's that dramatic and yeah. whatnot. But no, he, yeah, he's I'm, just my, I'm, I'm my toughest critic. Yeah, he's publicly talked about, too, how he has videos that they've spent millions of dollars on and they just scrap it because he doesn't like it. Yeah. But segueing into, I would love to talk a little bit about Valorant yeah. and these matches and Fnatic. Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> um, okay. Man, it's a tough match. Tough loss. Yeah. What was weird about all of Brazil. Jesus. Oh, yeah. Thank you, guys. What was weird about all Brazil was that I just don't think our team ever looked like themselves. You know, it's hard, even though home grounds was a Mickey Mouse land and some of the best teams that were there, Team Liquid, for instance, had substitutes. We talked about that. They still look dialed. And it looked like every match they were going to play, they were going to win. And I think versus FUT and EDG, 
those were both teams that the community expected us to just wash them, rinse them, and be done with it, and we didn't. And they were all very close. We actually probably should have lost uh, versus FUT. Probably should have lost versus EDG. And even going into this tournament, I heard Lotus was one of our best maps, and it just did not look like we were ready or prepared. And it looked like our comp was off too. Mm -hmm. You know, there's something, uh, this is as a fan, and this isn't criticizing our coaching staff by any means because I love our coaches. Moneyball Mike, Mike's HD. I don't want anybody to give him too much slack. Uh, You know, everybody thought it's very similar to how I feel. Our just comp felt different compared to every other team. For me, watching Cryo not play Jet just hurts. You know, that's where he really made the most impact when he was on X set. And I know the game evolves and people come up with new strategies and how to approach it. But we just felt and looked uncomfortable and nothing was easy in any sense of the word. And against Fnatic, I was actually excited to watch us play Fracture because we used to be a pretty good team. But 13-1, that's just inexcusable. And I know the players probably feel the same way. I mean, this is a, a stark difference from how we felt when we were making a bunch of roster changes and we got 13 out, I think, on a sent by the guard. Mm-hmm. I'm not over here, everybody's making jokes, so I'm going to blow up the team. I love these kids, man. They have been so much fun. It's been so refreshing to have them in the compound. They all got a great head on their shoulders, and it's probably been one of my favorite rosters we've had in 100 Thieves history, just going in that room and chopping it up with them. But people need to remember they're a very young team. And I know Fnatic is a young team too. Uh, people were saying that some of their players are even younger than ours, whatever. I don't know the actual ages, but Bang just graduated high school. You know, Derek, this is his first, and Cryo, their first like competitive shooter they've ever played at this level. I mean, Derek was like top 500 Overwatch, just put out in the ranked. He never went to lands or maybe yeah. something for fun, whatever. We just need to build experience. And we need to build experience in how they're going to feel on stage at these big international tournaments because it's a different beast entirely. What people don't really dig in and understand is that the way that you approach the game changes so much compared to playing ranked or playing scrims from the compound or playing even an online qualifying match. The the, the weight of the situation is just different. And so you start second guessing something that you would make in any given moment on the map. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's just so much nuance to the decision making that you have to have in game, you know, utility usage and uh, players uh, lurking and they're running fakes like up up the wazoo. And it's just tough, man. So yeah. uh, am I disappointed with the result? Yes and no. I would have loved to be fanatic and I would have loved to win the tournament. But I'm just happy more than anything that the players got to know and see that they bleed like we bleed. You know, after you yeah. lose 13 1, you go to Icebox and you're down just as bad as you were on that last map for them to claw their way back. And I know that last round that we lost with Durko with a, a, a fucking shorty yeah. and a dream the guy had like 30 HP. Under any circumstance, should we ever lose that round? And if we played it out 100 times, I don't think what happened happened. Yeah. Uh, wins the majority. But I'm just glad they got to see that they can compete with a team like Fnatic if they ever meet them in the finals again one day. Because a lot of it is just confidence. Yeah. You get you, you can get shaken up pretty badly losing like yeah. that on the world stage. But they're, they're, they're pound for pound one of the best teams in the world. They just need to understand and, and realize and believe and have conviction yeah. going into future tournaments. Yeah, I think the resiliency they showed throughout the tournament, you know, when the pressure was at its most, they showed up. I mean, EDG coming back, uh, FUT, the comebacks they had against them as well. I think that itself was a win. And, um, you know, people are always like, oh, what's an HR going to do? And I'm glad you touched on how just competitive you are. Obviously, we'd want to win everything, but you know, where they're at now, beginning of the season, I'm super excited for, for what's to come. And the fact that they just got that experience on lane. And like you said, they know that they're, they can compete. They bleed like we bleed. Um, I'm just super excited for, for what's next for them. Yeah. It's just, man, again, the comp thing just fucks with my head because yeah. I know that there's very different ways to play this game, but I can't tell. I don't know what the right thing to do is. Yeah. The only thing that I know is when I see a player on another team on a map that we're not playing Jet and they're running Jet, I'm like, fuck, dude. Yeah. 
just give Cryojet. <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> I know it's not that simple, but <laughs> yeah. I wish it was. <laughs> yeah. So as a fan, I'm just, I hope we tinker with some things in the background, maybe stop overthinking as much and just let the players play, man. Just go out there and be loose, be free, and we'll see what happens. Uh, th- there's a fine line there, yeah. too, because, you know, you, there's certain uh, engagements that you can challenge and rank that just won't work when you're playing, like, a full team competitive yeah. roster. Yeah. And we, we, we saw some mistakes, like solo plays, over-aggression. Uh, so I don't want to say, like, hey, you know, pull the trigger, be free, be loose, and just do whatever the fuck you want, but... They just need to find their rhythm. I think rhythm is just the underlying uh, component here that they just need to find. Does the game feel different on land too? Oh yeah, it does. Yeah, I mean, there's no, there's no ping. Shots just feel buttery smooth. I mean, land is like a completely different beast. Again, you know that's why there's always been that argument in esports, like, oh, you want you fucking beat me online. I'll see you on land. I mean, some kids just look rattled. You yeah. look over the stage, you just know it's fucking done. You can see like a glimmer in their eye. They won't even stand a chance. Yeah. And that's why Call of Duty team is so exciting because they, they lose matches online, but they get on land and it's just fucking over. Cook. Yeah. I love it. Um, the psychology of it's fun. Mm-hmm. Have you been watching this Murdoch trial at all? No. You got to watch the Netflix documentary. I watched, uh, I think the first episode of that. Fell asleep though. Well, man, I, 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 I just have no idea what's about to happen. I think the prosecution just rested. They just ended their their war path trying to prove that this guy killed his 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 son and his wife. Um, this is all TikTok hearsay. I I actually think he's going to get away. I I I just don't. I don't think they have uh, a reasonable argument and evidence to prove that he, without a doubt. 100% killed them. Wait, what Murdoch is? Is this Rupert? I don't, I watched it. Different. Wait, am I saying that last name right? I think so. Alex Murdoch? Oh, Alex Murdoch. Okay. I'm, I'm thinking of it. Oh, uh, no. Yeah. I thought Rupert Murdoch. And then I'm like, oh, wait, no. I was watching a Bernie Madoff Ponzi scheme show on Netflix. So I haven't seen anything. Don't know what any of it is. Okay. I'm going to give you the spark notes. <laughs> Quick rundown. See it. We'll talk about it. Then we'll end the episode. Okay. So this guy, Alex Murdoch, in the county that they live in, the Murdoch family's been around for like a hundred years. They have been basically the law. Mm-hmm. They have the longest running uh, attorney firm. His grandpa and his grandpa, they were all lawyers, and they've basically been running this place like it's the fucking mob. Your daddy may live on the lake, but my daddy owns the lake. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's like the best way to explain it. Yeah. And so uh, a couple years ago, one of his sons, uh, who they really painted as the problem child, like every male in that family has gone on to follow in their, you know, their father's footsteps, be a lawyer, go work at the firm, mm-hmm. and continue on the legacy. This kid, Paul, he was the outlier. Uh, he just liked to party and drink. His family's got all this money. They love guns. They live in the South, and they're just living that lifestyle. So Paul... The youngest son, the problem child, he goes on a boat trip and brings a bunch of his friends. They get to the location they were trying to reach. They start drinking. They get fucked up. And everybody, I guess, was trying to convince him, like, yo, we'll drive you guys home. We'll come get the boat in the morning. He says, fuck that. They take the boat back. They're all hammered. It's pitch black out, and they run full speed into a bridge. One of the best friends of Paul, his girlfriend, after they get thrusted into the water, they swim to the shore. They can't find her. Weeks go by uh, and volunteer divers finally find her body. And she, you know, obviously is dead at this point. And that was the crux of the entire Netflix special. And so fast forward uh, a couple years later, the father is now being accused of killing that son and his wife. Uh, they were at like the stables on their property. Uh, Paul got shot to the chest by a shotgun and then pumped to the head, brain matter, skull flying around. And then another rifle ends up a completely different gun is the one that kills the wife. And the, the, the father has been on the stand and he's a lawyer representing himself too. And basically, they went into his phone records. They tracked like and timed out all the pings to the cell phone tower. He had a, a, a fucking 
vacuum sealed alibi said that he went to see his dad in the hospital or something along those lines. And they just, they don't have a murder weapon. They don't have any forensics that actually prove that Alex, uh, the father killed, uh, you know, his family. And so it's been like a very big arc on TikTok over the last couple of weeks of people just being detectives and trying to decide whether he did it or not. Um, I think their biggest defense from what I was watching last night is, you know, there is no way that in any capacity he would have had enough time to kill his son from point blank range and then kill his wife, get rid of the clothes, not have any like DNA or blood spatter from these, these, these kills. Uh, one expert that the defense brought in said that the velocity of which this kid's head exploded there, there, there's just no way that he would have had any uh, physical ability to not have like blowback and that skull knocking him out or giving him any damage on his body or his person. And so look, I'm not an expert on the case and there's much better coverage from the TikTok community that has, has gone deep uh, into this case, but I think he's going to get off. Do you think he did it? So there's uh, that's even like a deeper conversation because apparently he's been uh, in financial debt, just fucking around with the family's wealth, got addicted to painkillers. His wife found like bags of pills in his in, in the house. Apparently she was going to be filing for divorce soon. So there's definitely motive. There's definitely motive to him killing them. Mm-hmm. But I don't I don't know enough about the case to decide whether I think he did it or not. Like all I care about is what's black and white. And since they don't have any of the murder weapons, they don't have any any DNA forensics. I just don't know how you can with full confidence prove you're innocent until proven guilty. Mm-hmm. And I don't think they've done enough to lock him away for murder. Double homicide. It's pretty fascinating. Damn. That's a nice little promo for the documentary. Yeah, they brought their oldest son on the stand in defense, and he kind of knocked it out of the park, <laughs> bro. His answers hope. were so good that the that that the TikTok comments were like, they're so well rehearsed. He doesn't even have a second uh, to respond. He just goes and and, and it's just a robot. Perfect answers. No likes in there. What? No likes in there. None. <laughs> I mean, this guy was ready to go. <laughs> so you should dig into it. Yeah. Watch the documentary. It doesn't really cover any of the murders. Uh, it just covers the boating accident, so a bit of a spoiler there, but I don't think he's going to go away. That'll be my homework. We'll we'll come back next week and rep- we'll report. Man, killing people in the 1800s must have been so, so fucking easy, dude. I would have been afraid for my life 24-7. I can't remember who the comedian was, but I brought that up to my roommate, and he was talking about this dude had this bit where he's like, yeah, you kill someone, he's like, oh, you're not there by the time the police get there? Like, all you have to do, like, oh, you're robbing a bank? Like, what do you have to do to get away? Like, just not be there? Like, okay. like Done. Yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah, I can figure as, that out. Simple as that. Oh, what a day. We filmed the podcast. I'm going to go home and play Ranked. We got to reschedule this, this juvie shoot later today. Yeah. I can't figure out from a calendar perspective why you would have the podcast at 8 a.m. and then Vinny at 2 p.m. Well, Vinny was already set for two, so I text you a reminder we have Vinny in the afternoon. I know, but what have we always talked about, Joe? If we're going to do anything, it has to be in the morning. Yeah, but the way that Sam texted you, he's like, oh, I already talked to Matt, put us on a thread together. I was like, okay. I know, brother, but you are you are my first line of defense. Even if Sam texted you and said, yo, me and Matt, were chopping it up, we're going to film this, you need to be on point and say... Oh, let me double check with Matt, but we should schedule this for 9 a.m. He can't do anything past 11 o'clock. You're you're my def- you're my defense, brother. You got to be on offense at the same time. Well, yeah, but got to will this into existence. Why didn't you just say that last night? Could have rescheduled it last night. <laughs> so we're not talking up. about that <laughs> circumstance. We're just talking about. Prior to it even getting to this point, dude, I, I, I'm, I'm. Well, your schedules. I don't know what your your stream schedule is. 
It's all you're all over the place every week. Yeah, because my okay. I'm take I'm taking it in as you give it out. Well, Embo's Scump and Methods want to play today at one o'clock PST, and I've been trying to get on those with those boys for like two weeks. Well, you should. I had six thousand viewers yesterday. We sold some juvie. It was a great day. Well, we could talk about it after, but we just got to get this done this week. It's Blue Raspberry promo. I know. This is a good podcast episode. I wish we. I, I think. I think what you did for the first two episodes with notes and uh, talking points, just to riff off of. I think that's super helpful. Mm-hmm. I mean, Kai Sinet, sick with Sentinels and Valorant. We talked about rank play. Yeah. These are all very current topics, but yeah, I just don't. I, I feel like if we film this episode, these episodes often, we're gonna run out of material unless you come correct. Yeah, hundred so, percent. And I think too. I wish, like even this second half of the episode, I wish the first half of this episode just didn't exist because I feel like the second half has been great. But uh, what was I going to say off of that? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> You're doing great, Joe. We're building the plane and flying it. I'm definitely getting more comfortable. And then, yeah, even us talking about these topics, um, I can definitely like, dig into them more, actually do some some PI work myself on these stories. I have some more spark notes ready to go. We only so. got we only got one zinger out of you. Yo, daddy. I <laughs> live on the lake. But my daddy owns the lake. Anybody anybody know what movie that's from? In the room? We'll give you a case of blue raspberry. Walk out of here today if you know. Come on. Five seconds. Do 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 a movie theater release. It wasn't a straight to Disney TV film. You tell me <laughs> through a <your> curveball. <laughs> the era of misinformation. <laughs> what did I see on Twitter the other day that hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I I I just Okay. I have nothing else. Ladies and gentlemen, that was episode number three. Hopefully, you will continue to tolerate our bullshit. I thought it was okay. If I had to give this episode a grade, I'd give it a B minus. But we don't need to be so self-critical. We're just here to talk. Some weeks are going to be more exciting than others. Some some week will be uh, filled with more news than others. But that's okay. We're just going to stay consistent. Try to be consistent. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed. And if you have any feedback for us, Please let us know. We're, 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 we're malleable. I'll take it all. Any feedback, it's greatly appreciated. If the comment section just wants to lay into I'm me. I'm going to make 10 burners and just <laughs> dig in you even more. <laughs> yeah. Hope you guys have a fantastic day. Thank you guys for watching and YouTube. We'll see you fudging later. Goodbye.